There's no secret. There's no shortcut. Everything that is alive is conscious. Be silent. Be still and know God. Until you feel worthy, it ain't going to happen. Rigorous, ruthless, disciplined focus. You have to get to a place where you can work on yourself. If you are looking to live at the tip of the spear when it comes to health optimization, join my private membership group, Fully Optimized Health. Dot com and get the latest and greatest on hormone optimization, peptides, fitness, fat loss, and most importantly, raising your vibration. Again, go over to fullyoptimizedhealth.com and sign up today. Well, what's going on, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you might be around the world? I am Jay Campbell, and of course, he is Hunter Williams right next to me, and this is the last Jay Campbell podcast. Yes, for those of you that don't know, we have as a group decision, because the Jay Campbell podcast is not just one person anymore, like it was 10 years ago when I first started, or actually it was like nine, 9.75 years ago when I first started it. Uh, for reasons that Hunter and I will get into in this podcast, it's not conducive for me from a time management standpoint to continue to put the podcast out. So we have decided to shut it down. And this podcast, which is being broadcast or recorded on uh, August 15th, Thursday, which is Coincidentally, the normal studio days for my podcast um, is going to be published, I think, on September 22nd or 24th, whatever, yeah, yeah. whatever the last Thursday, I think, or excuse me, the last Monday, or actually the second to last Monday in September of this year. So, um, man, no better person I'm to, to be on my final podcast. But maybe before we get into what we're going to really talk about, which are people all over the board, um, you know, what are your thoughts like? You know, what do you, what do you remember about the Jay Campbell podcast? Well, first of all, it is an honor, privilege, and I am humbled, blessed, and all that course, stuff yeah, to be you, here. Bro. Yeah, I love you, bro. And um, it's crazy to think back to when, you know, I'm 31 now. I was uh, 23. Yeah, I think dude. I just like turned 23 when I started listening to your podcast, dude. Obviously, through the real estate world, I found you and stuff. And so it's crazy to think like back then to where we are now, just like how the world has changed, how we've changed how business has changed and stuff. Um, for me, looking back, um, it, it's crazy because back then, let's see, that would have been, it was 2016. Yeah. So when I started listening to it, uh, back then, like podcasts were all the rage, dude. Everybody and their brother, that was like, it was like the emerging medium. And I remember even back then, I like kind of knew because I was a podcast listener and uh, I worked in real estate. So I was driving around a lot, so I'd listen to podcasts. And, uh, I didn't consciously understand it, but back then there was like certain podcasts. And I was like, man, I just don't like, what am I listening to? And I remember hearing your stuff through the real estate podcast that I found. And I was all into the testosterone and fitness and everything like that. I was like, oh, this is so cool because most of the fitness podcasts back then, dude, I had just come off of like being a division one football player and stuff. And I was beyond the listening because even back then they were pretty like, you know, simple minded type fitness podcast. I was like, Oh, this dude's talking about stuff that nobody is even like, aliens. yeah. Like that I've ever heard before. Well, and then that's when I was like, and then I started listening to, it, I was like, he's talking about aliens and stuff. I was like, dude, this is like, I feel like I've found someone that like understands the world that I've been trying to like navigate around and understand. So then at that point, like I was hooked. And then, you know, like here we are today. So it's been, it's been a long journey since then, but I think for me, Back then, like knowing what I know now about like consciousness, like how we are all tied into the world, what you were saying back then resonated with me at a certain level, just like everyone that has listened to your podcast, whether it's for a short time or a long time, it resonates. And I think knowing what I know now, it's because it's truth. And it's truth in the sense that like, you may talk about stuff, I may talk about stuff that may one day not be like, technically accurate or right. factually accurate but it comes from a place of truth mm -hmm. meaning that like it is your intention to bring the truth to the world and uh, i think that's well i know that's what i resonated with so much back then and you know obviously uh you know through a long journey we ended up working together and stuff so um it's cool because i think we're we're calling this the final podcast but it's going in a new direction and uh, I think the world has changed so much since then, since like the golden days of podcasting. And, um, you know, this, I uh, think just for uh, not only the business side of things, but just like for how people 
um, consume media yeah. now and where like everything is just gone. I think this is definitely the best thing to do, but it is like from a, like a nostalgic and sentimental standpoint, it is cool to look back and think about like all the days, like all the guests. And I think for you, what you, guests. yeah, dude, what you, what you were so good at was like collating the network of the coolest people. And so many of the podcast world, like I'm sure we'll talk about much today. It's like these like clicks almost. And dude, you had like, I mean, to think about like when I was really like, dude, this is amazing. Like to think about John D'Souza yeah. to someone like Marcus Reinhardt. Right. You know, like the, the, like the, like complete, like what you would say is like complete difference, but then also to like how it comes together for everything that you teach people now and like what it means to like raise your consciousness through health optimization stuff to me, like back then was the coolest thing. And I think, you know, to the people that find you now is like why they resonate so much. So, uh, it's awesome for me, obviously, you know, like to be able to get to do and work on the things we do today, uh, you know, is like a dream every day for me, but, um, it's crazy to think like from where it was one day to, uh, where we are now. So, yeah, man, I mean, you, there's a lot of stuff there. I mean, I'm kind of getting a little bit of emotional right now because it's really unpacking my, my conscious mind of like all the things that I've seen and witnessed on this. I mean, dude, I've had three people that I've had on my podcast who are already dead. Yeah. Remember that guy, what was his name? Who was the biohacker? And they, they he was basically uh, killed off. I mean, he came on talking about, uh, it wasn't exosomes. It might've been some higher level than exosomes, but and, oh no, it was, it was uh, CRISPR. And oh yeah. Died. Yeah. And I can't even think of his name right now, but I, I'll call it, you know, I'll have a link to that episode, but I mean, yeah. he was, they killed him. He was a very bright guy. I mean, I think Ryan Smith set me up to talk to him. Uh, what I want to say this is back in 2017. It might, it might've been 2018. I don't remember, but then I've had two other people that have been on the podcast that died. So it's like three people, but I think what I'm most fond of this podcast is that, and I know you know this, but for those of you guys that are newer to this audience, it's like, you know, I, uh, made my break and became quote unquote, you know, internet known, uh, through the books on testosterone. Yeah. Right. And so the first book was published in 2015. It was really written in 2014, but for, you know, many reasons, which we left off this air, I didn't publish it until November of 2015. And then obviously it blew up and that was called the definitive TRT manual. But at that time I wasn't sure enough about myself. I, clearly I did not love and trust myself enough to brand myself. And so it was TRT, well, it was actually it was TRT revolution. Then it became TOT revolution. So yeah, from yeah. testosterone replacement therapy revolution to testosterone optimization therapy revolution. And obviously that's kind of the name that, that stayed. Um, and that was all, you know, I, as you know, again, the, the podcast launched in early 2015. Yeah. And, uh, and it was, it, it you know, I, again, I had many, many amazing interviews from 2015 to 2019 with a lot of individuals, but it was always kind of weird because I would, as you said, I would bring people from like the testosterone space, physicians, doctors, clinicians, and then I would bring like somebody like John D'Souza, <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I mean, I think of all of the incredible, you know, call them conspiratorial, you know, analysts or, you know, the new age or the metaphysician world. I mean, obviously we just, you know, had a podcast, I mean, on the new show, the live stream with Shane Bales, I mean, he yeah. was one of the yeah. first podcast guests back yeah. in 2016, right? And, and, you know, obviously he broke into this and I helped him, you know, gain his notoriety. And, you know, obviously it was always a, a, a symbiotic relationship, you know, you come on my show, you gain notoriety, I gain notoriety, both of us, you know, uh, resonate and, and move out and, and upward in consciousness. And then also just and attracting the right people. But. I think it's weird, Hunter, because, you know, I think about how, how hard it was for me in 2019 to actually stop the TOT revolution podcast and change to the J Campbell podcast and how yeah. many people who are supporters of me. And this is again, obviously in the very early fledgling beginning of J Campbell. But if you remember TOT revolution, the website had a lot of visitors. It had yeah, a lot of yeah. people. And Dude, it I was still... actually the number one website online for information on testosterone for about three years. And so when I, when I, and, and I know you know this, but for the audience that doesn't know this, I made the official decision to move to Jay Campbell when I was in Peru. Yeah. And I had a 
insane spiritual you know breakthrough there and it wasn't just me it was monica and then george cordova shout out to george uh and his wife liz and we were obviously there together for 14 days it was you know a magical trip but as you know, we did a ceremony on Lake Titicaca and the lake came alive and literally kissed us. That's the only way I can explain it, you know, in a third density way to understand it. And all four of us spontaneously started crying. Yeah. And George at that time was very resistant to this kind of stuff. He wasn't into the woo and he didn't know what was going on. And he was like fighting it, you know, and he's like, why am I crying? What is going on? Eh, you know, and me and Monica were just like embracing it because, you know, we had already had our spiritual transformations. And it was just so profound. And I remember literally getting on the, where we were in the lake, getting back on the uh, boat ride back to the shore and then getting on the bus to take us to our hotel. And I literally looked over at Monica and I said, that's it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to become Jay Campbell. Everything that I do is about Jay Campbell, the Jay Campbell podcast, the Jay Campbell brand, the Jay, you know, I'm going to build a website. And she was just like, okay, well, she loves me. It was like, whatever. And I just remember saying it to George, which was three days later or two days later, because we, you know, got back on the plane to fly back to Los Angeles. And he was like, bro, are you sure? I mean, you really want to do this? You know? And then from there, it was talking to my people, you know, my team, which was way smaller than, than it is now, but they were literally like, dude, you've lost it. Have you jumped the shark? You know, what happened to you? Did you, you know, smoke peyote and brain mm -hmm. melted while you were over in Peru, you know, blah, blah, blah. Cause we're like, you have all these analytics, you got this great website. Why would you do this? And I said, I remember, honestly, it was, it was Max. And I remember saying to Max, like, oh, you know what? Anybody who has a problem with my transition, you know, because this is, I mean, it was, again, it was very simple. My bio changed. It was all about, I realized that my role here, again, we talked about today on our podcast, I mean, not our podcast, but our um, session for the new course that we're filming uh, was my purpose was to teach people that the importance of raising their conscious frequency. Yeah. And that there was nothing else. It wasn't about teaching them to be health optimized or testosterone or peptides and all these great things that come after that. But I knew from my time in Peru and that experience, and it was not just that one experience, it was the whole experience, that I was here, that my purpose in life, just as your purpose is, is to teach people how to raise their conscious frequency. And obviously you do that through optimizing your spiritual or your physical avatar body. But I, I just knew it. I, I was so focused, nothing was going to stop me. And it was very difficult in 2019 because as I was doing this, bro, in September, guess what came six months later? COVID. Mm -hmm. And so this all happened, this magic, this, this amazing building the brand, becoming who I am now, you know, internet famous, whatever you want to call it. But all of this stuff happened as COVID transformed the world, right? And obviously, as you and I know, it transformed the majority of the world negatively. Yeah. But for the people who were focused, consciously committed, and of course, again, purpose-driven, almost everyone to a person through COVID has literally transformed their life. They've transformed their income ability. They transformed their, transformed their relationships. Many people left broken relationships. Again, we did a video today about spiritual partnerships. Many people left uh, their, their marriages or their relationships that were broken and were not spiritual partnerships. So a lot of good even though it was smaller percentage wise than the overall came from COVID and came from this. And I, I can honestly say, bro, that without COVID, I don't know if my transition would have been this stark because I was so focused and so committed on pushing against that nonsense, against that scamdemic and against the, you know, the, the elites, the reptilians, the fourth density, whatever you want to call them that were behind the whole thing. And that focus and that purpose allowed all of this to build. Yeah. Well, dude, what's crazy is. In hindsight, everyone can kind of look and be like, oh, yeah, like it was cool. You had this, you know, TOT revolution. You go to Jay Campbell. I still actually remember I wasn't involved in doing any of that back then. But I still remember when you did that, I was like, I was like, that's the coolest thing ever. I was like, that's like, that's, awesome. that's what it's all about is like teaching people, you know, it's like mind, body, soul, right? That's what I used to, you know, what I thought back then is like, it's all one, you know, like your mind is your body, is your soul. And you want to teach people how to do that. Now, what people don't, really think about is like you coming from like a very extensive marketing and online marketing background doing something like that is literally what they would call suicide literally it's suicide. like literally it's taking something suicide. that is like pumping traffic that is pumping views that is pumping all the stuff that's on a trajectory I mean, I had six years yeah deep blog writing on testosterone and you know uh, seoing and obviously 
meditate, I mean, all the things that you do as an aspiring author on the internet with a brand, uh, not a brand, but obviously a, a blog, a very, very well received and well written. And again, I wouldn't call it highly searched, right? Because I was blind. I mean, we need to talk about yeah. that too. I mean, I was obviously suppressed. I mean, I was blocked. I mean, Google was suppressing and blocking my articles because again, as you know, they don't want people on testosterone. Dude, I still remember, I remember a long time ago reading the forums on there and you would have these clowns and quacks come in your forums, like say like nonsense and stuff. And you would actually like stick up for yourself. And I was like, dude, this is awesome that like people will go on here. But what was that website too? It was uh, testosteroneaddiction.com, yeah, testosterone maybe, or something well, like that. Then I also had, yeah, I had like, the, my initial early forum, which was through Facebook, which obviously had no hope, as toxic as that place is. It was called um, Fully, uh, what was it? Optimized, optimized Forever. It was called yeah, Optimized yeah, Forever. Yeah. And, I, and again, it was all the testosterone people. Yeah. You know, and that's obviously a very distinct crowd. And back then it was a crowd of people that were like very resistant to anything, but like, oh, I'll protest testosterone. It wasn't like the anabolic steroid bros, but it was like the next level. You know what I mean? So there were a lot of doctors, there were a lot of people that were like, you know, experimenting and seeking a different way, but like it wasn't the people that I attract now. And yeah, again, I just remember having that conversation with Max. I mean, Max, you know, supported me. He was a young kid and he was just being paid by me. So he was going to do what he was doing, but he was very question of, questioning of me. And he was like, are you sure? Yeah. You, are you sure this is what you want to do? Cause there's no going back. You know, you can't unwind it. This is like, you're Jay Campbell now and everything is going to be Jay Campbell. And I, I just remember telling him, I'm like, the people that don't, uh, that, that won't accept this, they can fuck off. And they can unfollow me and I don't care because yeah. where I'm going, I'm only going to attract the people that understand that it's about spiritual evolution. It's about raising your conscious frequency. It's about this act here. And it always was about that. But as you know, dude, like, and Hunter's writing a book right now, and it'll, uh, hopefully it'll be published by the time this podcast comes out. Cause again, we're still about six weeks from this podcast publishing, but, um, his book is called testosterone and the God molecule. And it's a profound book. I mean, it really does teach normies people that don't understand the power of testosterone, the benefits of testosterone, it's written in a way that they can relate to it. So I'm very hopeful that it'll really scale, you know, in, in the mass consciousness. And it might not because they'll suppress it because obviously the message is, 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 is something they don't want getting out there. But um, I don't know, it was, it was very difficult at first for me because as you know, also I was transitioning away from real estate. You yeah. know? And at that time, and that's how you really met me and found me. I mean, Monica and I had a very successful residential real estate sales, uh, you know, basically a team, you know, and, and eventually a brand, you know, it was the Monica Diaz team. And then it became EWC Realty, Agents Who Care. Uh, you know, so it was, it, was a, it was a serious brand. And as you know, like you said, I was a, a really good at digital marketing. I understood like the power of online testimonials and reviews. And we built up one of the most five biggest uh, five-star related relationship uh, agencies in Southern California, which yeah. is you know, one of the biggest real estate markets. Not yeah. 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 So it's like, you know, we were doing really, really well. Monica and I were doing really well. And again, I have to mention this, uh, in the background was us raising up blended family, yeah. having two brutal divorces. I mean, again, I, my story is very obvious. It's been open. I have no problem sharing it. You know, I was, went to jail. So, uh, mm -hmm. My ex was cheating on me and uh, her uh, boyfriend was, you know, worked in law enforcement or had worked in law enforcement. And, and it just, it's a long story. It's very sordid. I had a lot of guilt in it myself. I mean, I was a bad person. I was all ego driven and mind driven, but you know, I had to go to jail for five days, and then lose my job. You know, I was a very high level, high paid wage slave, you know, in the digital automotive marketing world. And after that, I lost my job because I, I couldn't pass a background check. And so. I was literally forced to become an entrepreneur. I didn't have an option, you know, and I had no mentorship to becoming an entrepreneur. I was, I ended up becoming self-taught, but Monica believed in me. And she was a very, very successful residential real estate rep. But she, when she saw my digital marketing, you know, know-how and stuff, she was like, oh, well, everything you do is exactly what I need. Why don't we work together? And I was so against it because I was so afraid of being an entrepreneur. Again, yeah. I was a wage slave. I was an institutionalized man from a mindset standpoint my whole life. And I was a very accomplished wage slave. But, you know, it all came together. And so in, so in between transitioning to online brands, and, and by the way, just so people know, like the first five years of the podcast, I made no money, literally. I mean, I, you know, I made money on selling my books, but the podcast produced no money. It was absolutely a labor of love. It was just a passion project. 
But honestly, I built a lot of relationships. I made, I'm a very good connector as Hunter knows. I mean, most of you guys know that. I mean, I, you know, have relationships with a lot of very high level people now, and that's kind of a gift, but it was just willing relationship. There was no monetization. It was very little revenue drive. You know, I would pay out of my pocket. Thankfully, Monica and I were successful in real estate. I would go to the doctor's conferences and I built up these relationships with physicians. But, you know, it was, again, very difficult because Monica had three children from a previous marriage and I had two little girls from a previous marriage. And both of our spouses were, the best word is recalcitrant. Yeah. And we were paying them a lot of money. Okay. Because again, both of us had come from backgrounds where we were doing well. And it was crazy. As I told you, I mean, like we were literally, you know, I've never said this publicly, but I'll say this now, you know, we were literally paying $8,100 a month before we paid a single bill to our exes. Right. And that's a lot of money, even now today. And, you know, to, to, to have to then raise five children living in Southern California, which is obviously the highest cost of living, probably second to Manhattan, but right up there. Uh, it was not easy, bro. It was, yeah. it was stressful. And, you know, so again, I was the marketing guy for Monica's real estate team and we were building a team. And at the same time at night, I had this quote unquote, J Campbell brand TOT revolution side hustle, which really wasn't making a lot of money. And I, you know, I really want to sing this and you know this already. But Monica really, I'm very grateful to Monica because she allowed me to build the brand. She allowed me, she was responsible for helping raise my daughters when we got them back after all the you know, legal snafus and bullshit that we had to go through. She allowed me to build this. She allowed me to work endless hours and nights, day and night, seven days a week for literally six years to build this to where it is now. Um, and, and so I'm, you know, I will always be super grateful for her to allow that because she never complained. She never said anything. She just raised her, both of my daughters, Gabby and Alexandra, like they were her own. And obviously they look up to her as their mother, you know, so I'll always be grateful for that. But I mean, it was not easy. I mean, it really was not easy. I mean, her ex attempted to put me in jail too, you know, just for one time that we ever had a conversation, he threatened Monica and I said, Hey dude, I will blah, blah, blah. And he could not being a social justice warrior, let that go. And he helped police detectives investigate me. And it was just, you know, without bringing all the sort of events, it was crazy. And so from basically from 2012, when we met till 2020, uh, it was dude, it was a, it was a, an adventure. I mean, yeah. we had amazing times. We trapped, you know, I, I should say this because it's important. Um, in 2016, Monica and I, Every year in, in the winter, Monica would do a dream board and I would always laugh and say, I don't do that dream boards. I do action boards because, you know, I don't dream. I take action and I make it happen. But we would always do that and we would like, you know, back and forth. But we said to each other in, in December of 2016 that we were going to live a life design, by design. And that what that meant to us is that every eight weeks we would be an international, I mean, a, I'm sorry, a tropical destination. We would be in a tropical location destination wherever it was in the world. I'm, a, I'm a, not a cold weather guy. Monica loves cold weather, but I was the, you know, beach, sand, you gotta have me there. I, I don't care about anything else. You know, mountains are cool too, but not cold. So we did that and we were able to do that, balancing the kid, dealing with all the shit that we were dealing with, paying all, you know, for our ex-spouses and our ex-relationships and benefits, all this stuff. And it was amazing. I, and we had adventures galore. We went to so many places. We traveled so many places in the world. It's unreal. I mean, again, it's a book if I ever wanted to write it. Um, and, 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 and so all that was happening while we were balancing all this out. But I mean, I just think about thinking back to it. Uh, and then again, you know, for everybody, you know, who, who, who lived through COVID, you know, everybody's life changed in 2020, yeah. you know, March of 2020 is when everyone's life changed. And again, I think we can look at it. You can comment on it, but like your life changed for the better or it changed for the worse based on your thoughts. Well, you know, the old separate the wheat from the tares kind of thing that was COVID and mm -hmm. Ironically enough, we're probably coming up as of 2024, you know, heading into fall of 2024. It's probably going to be something Might similar, be happening again. similar soon. There always will be into the future. You know, there's always going to be a divergence and stuff. But yeah, I think 2020 was crazy in the sense that it kind of, especially in the digital, like online world, which is, which is where everyone lives now, kind of like split everyone, you know, and it was like, you were either on this side or that side and everyone was trying to figure out what was going on. But um, I even remember that time in terms of like your podcast and ecosystem stuff, just how in, you know, really 12 months, how much changed with that, you know, like in terms of who the, who we were talking to, you know, like 
who you had on as a guest, and then also to like the content of the material. So it was like before, you know, it was obviously all about testosterone and everything. And then in 2020, we go through this time where people are, they're either falling asleep or they're waking up, you know, and people are making decisions in 2021 about what to inject themselves with. And it was a crazy time, dude. And that's kind of like when I really like got closer to you and started working with that's you. That's when and you was, started coming out to the West Coast. Yeah. And we started building things together. And all yeah. of a sudden, before you know it, you were, you know, you were advising me when I was, when I had a seer. Yeah. I mean, again, dude, so much has happened in the last four years between me and you. I mean, if you just think about like in just the last year and a half, like we've added multiple courses together. We've written a book together. We've traveled the world together, you know, We've met your girlfriend and traveled the world with her. We've yeah. had like incredible, insane experiences. I mean, everything keeps getting big, better, bigger, better, and beyond. And it's like, it's obviously not going to stop anytime soon unless the world ends, which I don't think it will, but you never know. I mean, things are definitely weird out there. Um, but it's crazy, dude. You're right. I mean, like, it's so insane to think about the amount of creation <laughs> between us in just the last 18 months. Yeah. Well, it really is to a testament to like you were saying about like optimizing the physical avatar to how that translates into a quantum reality, mm -hmm. you know, because like we were talking, we were talking about, we were joking last night, like we do more stuff in a day than a lot of people do in six months at their wage, year. yeah, or a year at their wage slave job because their brains would melt. And um, there's a time and a place for everything. And that doesn't mean like we work 24 seven, but we do work really hard and we work really fast. And the reason is because one, we have a purpose around this, you know, and it's like we have a purpose and we see people's lives that get changed for it. And that's feedback to us like, hey, there, there is it, you know, amongst, amongst the 90% that seems like it's futile, there is the 10% that's like, okay, it is making a difference. Um, but yeah, dude, I think that's a testament to like the quantum reality based on the nature of the stuff that we do in health optimization. And, um, you know, one of the reasons I love working with Jay so much is because Jay is Jay. So like the Jay you see on the podcast is the Jay you will see in person. And unfortunately, you can't say the same for a lot of, call them online influencers, educators, thought leaders, experts, or whatever. Um, and when it comes to like teaching this material and stuff, like even the course we're filming right now, which is like a behind the scenes, like literally get to follow us around all day. You know, if you could pay us to follow us around all day and pick our brains. This is what the course is going to be. Um, you know, that is a testament to practicing what you preach. And unfortunately, a lot of people, um, no one's perfect, but a lot of people don't practice what they preach. And, uh, you know, maybe that could lead us into like what the nature of podcasting yeah. they have <laughs> has become because the world uh, right now is basically transitioned to even if you think about like the, the uh, evolution of your podcast, we have, gone into a like increasingly holographic world in which like nothing is real on the internet anymore like the people that you see the stuff they talk about it's either lies and the people aren't real in more ways than you would probably think or understand <laughs> you know so yeah i mean we get into hyperdimensional stuff well i mean again for you guys that have watched this that are that are you know quote unquote fans or you know quote unquote addicted to the jay campbell podcast who probably are sad right now because you're like damn this isn't coming anymore and truthfully, again, Hunter and I have Intro H Live, and that's a Sunday night live stream that we do. And we get, you know, five to 600 people watching live, and it's only growing from that. Um, and that's obviously a better use of our time at this point, because again, you know, and like you just said, and we're going to get to that in a second. I mean, the, the average podcast today, the, the podcast world is so oversaturated. There are a lot of people, and again, I don't care if people get hurt because again, most of you guys listen to what I say because you know that I speak the truth and you also know that I don't give up. And I speak coming from a place of pure authenticity and transparency and I don't hold back. I tell, I say it like it is and whether you like it or not, it is what it is. You know, you don't like it, you can opt out. If you like it, you stay and you listen to it and thankfully I have enough people to like it, but most people that have podcasts should not have podcasts. They're barking to the wind. They have nothing interesting to say. They attract people that don't have anything interesting to say. And so literally I'm killing the Jay Campbell podcast because it doesn't make any sense anymore. There are so many podcasts, the podcast world, the scammers that are involved in the marketing of podcasts. I mean, Hunter and I have had personal experience with these people. They will literally steal from you 
look you in the eyes and not even have the balls or the common courtesy to actually say why they ripped you off. You'll never hear from them again. They'll change businesses. They'll change names. I mean, it's insane what goes on in the internet marketing world. And so like, it just got to the point where it just became tedious. And again, when you look around and you see how many people have podcasts, how many people are literally barking to the wind, speaking nothing, saying nothing, you know, attracting people that are not really truly into what they have to say. It just got to a point where it's not worth it anymore. And again, I'm not making excuses. And Hunter knows this. I mean, Hunter was the guy that taught me this. This was a top 1% podcast. Top point, world, 0.5% podcast. Top 0.5% yeah. podcast in the world for nine years. Nine years. I started with nothing. I had no team. I did this myself. I published it. Uh, I got to give shout outs to Matt Johnson at Pursuing Results, who was literally running my podcast for eight years. Uh, he did a lot of you know groundwork, laid a lot of work for me, did a lot of work, hired a lot of people uh, to build the Jay Campbell podcast and become um, you know working with me. As Hunter knows, I'm not easy to work with. I'm very, very, very focused very driven. And if you fuck off, you're going to be told that you're fucking off. If you don't, you know, perform, you don't last. Uh, I don't ever dehumanize people or, you know, demean people. Um, but you know, I'm very driven and very focused. And it's like, you know, if you're going to, if I'm going to work with you or you're going to work with me, you better be focused on your job and it better mean something to you. So, um, Matt was able to stay with me for literally eight years. So I'm very grateful to him. So I love you, my bro. If you, hopefully you see this and somebody will point this out to you at some point. Matt stopped working with me, dude, almost a year ago. Yeah, that's when we like kind of transitioned. So Matt's been out yeah. with me for almost a year, but he was with me for the first, you know, not the first, but the middle. I mean, he basically was with me at the end of the first and then eight years. And now, you know, here we are almost into 10 years. But um, so shout outs to Matt for show results. Uh, there's so many people that I would like to thank truthfully, but, you know, if you're a listener slash an audience member, somebody who's been watching this podcast, and again, there's a lot of women now, there's, probably more women, new, more new women that are watchers of this podcast than men. And obviously at the beginning, it was mostly men because it was testosterone. But um, I'm just grateful that you listened to me. I'm grateful that you actually find value in what I have to say. I'm grateful that you found value in the people that I interviewed. Uh, as you said, dude, like, like attracts like. And there are a lot of people waking up. And I, and I, you know, I'll, let's just be honest. I mean, again, COVID build my brand even more because people that realized that it was a scam found me because yeah. as you know, I was literally telling people in 2020 that masks were a scam. We wrote an article on Google that went crazy for a weekend and then Google found it and blocked it. Right. But we literally had another 8,000 word article on all the research on masks. And we were telling people right then and there, and this was actually June and you guys are still up, probably still blocked, but in June of 2020, we wrote an article about how masks were a scam. And again, because people who were resonating with the idea that it was a scamdemic and it was a setup by elites to you know, further control people and population check, they found me, dude. They found this material. They found this evidence. And obviously, you know, I connected with other people of like mine, but there's no doubt that COVID blew Jay Campbell brand, Jay Campbell podcast, the Jay Campbell, you know, ecosystem into the stratosphere. And I'm blessed now to have the team that I have, the people that I work with, you know, including Hunter, Matt Spangler. I mean, there's so many people that I could name that I'm grateful for. Again, I'll probably just name some people right now that just come, you know, stream of consciousness. Obviously, Max Maxson, I love you, bro. Thank you for being here with me. Max literally was 16 years old when he sent me a cold pitch email. I think back in 2016 or 2017 and said, I want to work with you. I get this is what I can do. When I wrote him back, I was like, well, how old are you? And he said, 16. I was like, I remember showing it to Monica and she's like, well, he's obviously very smart. And so he's been with me literally, I mean, literally through it all. I mean, so Max, I love you, man. Shout outs to you. Uh, God, I mean, there's so many people. Um, there's people that I'm not, I'm going to forget, unfortunately, the, all the, all you guys that helped me that came from Brian Cron. I forget all of you guys' names. I know there was, um, man, I can't think of any of you guys' names right now, but uh, the guy in San Diego, uh, you were amazing. Thank you, bro. Um, Nick, that was the guy. Nick in Northern Kentucky, or not Northern Kentucky, but Southern Kentucky. Uh, and then the other guy that worked with you guys, all three of you guys, man, I really appreciate you guys, what you did for me. You helped me build my email list. You taught me a lot of email, internet marketing savvy. So thank you guys for that. Um, man, the agency, oh, Toria. I got to mention Toria. Toria was 
Victoria worked with me during a seer when Nick Andrews and I were a fledgling startup, you know, peptide based cosmeceutical company. And Toria was helping me with my brand building and really transitioning with Jay Campbell from the TOT revolution. In fact, she worked for the agency that was working with me when I first started to build my brand up. And then again, COVID came and wiped yeah. out, you know, the entire agency. They had like 40 clients. They were a big deal in Phoenix, Arizona. They were actually in Scottsdale. And of course, COVID took, took down their agency. So I ended up getting Toria to come work with me. And she worked with me for about a year and a half, actually two years. So again, Toria, uh, obviously I got to shout out to you, Matt, for being involved back in those days too and helping me with my internet marketing. He also did a bunch of stuff for our real estate team. And just so, I just, again, there's, I know there's so many people right now that I'm not, because we're obviously slant. I mean, you know, our brains are melting yeah. on production and creation that we did today because we filmed a lot of videos. But there's a lot of people that were involved in the Jay Campbell podcast. And if I can't remember you right now, Frank Klesich. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, obviously I already gave Matt, uh, John uh, from from Viral. I mean, there's, there's so many people that were involved in this. And again, I can't, if I can't think of your name right now because it's not coming to me, it's not because I don't love you and appreciate what you did for me. It's just that my brain Right now, it's very scattered for all the work that we did today. But man, there's been so many people for all the guests. I mean, I can just think of, I mean, literally, dude, there was over 500 episodes, right? Yeah. So like, there have been so many amazing guests. And again, I have love in my heart and I'm grateful for every single one of you guys uh, coming on, you know, again, when it was, you know, just a, a job for you to, you know, do it because, it, you know, at one time in the first four or five years, you know, I mean, even though I was a very highly rated podcast, I had no promotion, you know, nobody knew who I was. So again, for you guys to do it back then, I really, really, I'm just, again, just have so much gratitude, bro. Yeah. It's crazy to think too, like through the years, like the hands that go in to yeah. like helping yeah. and building everything and like. And think of all my videos and how they were suppressed on Google or yeah, YouTube. And, and you YouTube. now knowing now what we know about YouTube too, you know, what's crazy. And this kind of like relates to like the whole podcasting ecosystem in general um, for and I'm going to lay some like hard facts on people that don't really want to hear, you know, stuff about yep. shadow banning or whatever. For someone to be like a top 5% podcast and then to basically have like an unwritten rule that they're not allowed to go on some of the bigger podcasts that are out there and to see some of the other people that come up through the ranks, so to speak, and get put onto these bigger podcasts. I think that podcasting has turned into something now where it's like you probably have like these top like 50 or 100 podcasts, especially um, in, you know, the health or even, you know, just like like alternative, you know, conspiracy world, whatever you want to call it. Um, and it all kind of turns into like this big click or whatever. And certain things are allowed to be talked about and certain things are not allowed to be talked about. Um, and just through like our navigation of that, you know, business landscape of stuff, is like we went through it, you know, we lost a lot of money, like trying to figure that stuff out and like, you know, do, you know, have people on your podcast, but then also go on to other podcasts and stuff. And I think more or less, a lot of those have become something of like a social engineering project. And you have these bigger podcasts now and they turn into more of just like, like entertainment consumption type content. And what I always loved about your podcast was like, exciting and fun to listen to but there was like teaching i think like pretty much anyone can watch Definitely. like any of your podcasts whether it's about testosterone or it's about hyperdimensional control matrix stuff and you're like actually learning stuff walking away from that that can change your life you know and like actually change your life for the better i know damn sure it did my i think that's for sure just in terms of like my personal health stuff so um i think that's one thing and not to say that you can't learn from other podcasts and stuff but it's almost become this thing of just like no different than like people watching Netflix or something that's like, like, it's like, oh, did you turn in to the new episode of that podcast? And people in a way think they're getting valuable information when it's really not. And uh, I think for like, you know, what we do and what we do together, it's like we want to put information out there to help people, whether it's about peptides or whether it's about like understanding your reality better. And I think that's just become increasingly like more convoluted and hard to do um, with where media is going in the world, you know? I think, because we're at almost 39 minutes and I, I don't want to go longer than 45 minutes. I think to wrap this up, you know, we'll share some promotional stuff and then we'll also message where you can find us as we move forward because we're not going anywhere. But I think if you ask the average J. Campbell podcast audience member or listener, 
what they were the most fond of, I think they would say that Jay didn't give a fuck. Yeah. <laughs> that Jay would go out there, no matter who he was talking to, no matter who he was interviewing, no matter what the conversation was about, he would speak from the heart. He would speak in a raw, unfiltered, visceral way. And he didn't care if it offended the people that came on his podcast. And, you know, it, it, was, it was, there were very few times that, again, the eight or nine years that I was on a podcast where I was, uh, you know, uh, afraid to speak the way that I wanted to speak. And again, hundred eyes without sharing specific uh, insights or intel, I've refused to go on some very, very high level podcasts in my life because I was told that I wouldn't be able to speak in the way that I wanted to speak due to corporate censorship, sponsors, whatever you want to call it. And I basically said, go fuck yourself. Not coming on. Not going to set me up. You're not going to put me in a jackpot. You're not going to put me in some sort of position where it's like, you got me because I can't speak the way I want to speak. Uh, and so that's happened. And, 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 and you know this, I mean, did that limit my reach? Did that limit my brand? Of course it did. Mm -hmm. Do I give a fine? No, because I would never, ever have sold out. Jay Campbell does not sell out. I've never sold out. I will never sell out. Nobody can buy me off or pay me off. I will talk about the reptilians. I will talk about fourth density. I will talk about consciousness harvesting. I will talk about all the things that are going on in this illusion, this realm of Maya that we exist in and not care. And you know this as well as anybody, like if the dark side decided to take me out, great. I'll come back stronger, brighter, better than I was before. And I've always said, that. you know, I have no fear of the enslavement complex, the elites, whoever they are, the Illuminati, the reptilians, you know, whoever it is, the covens, the families, I don't care. You cannot kill me because I'm not going to die. I am an infinite being. I'm an eternal energy being, just as he is, just as every one of you guys are. And if what, once you know that, your spirit is infinite. You can't be killed. Your physical being can be killed. Your physical body is going to die. Both of our physical bodies are going to die at some point. But I'm not afraid of that. So, I mean, again, I, I just think that that was probably really what allowed my podcast to thrive because I spoke from the heart. I spoke from where I thought was always true. I was never afraid to to ask the right questions or ask the hard questions. Because again, I'm not afraid. I mean, you can't, you cannot position me in a way that, that will get me to sell out or to give up or to take the money and run because I'm not, that's not how I live, bro. Yeah. Well, and what I appreciate too is to go back to what Jay always says, if you look right here, that word, you probably can't see because it's far away, is courage. And if you look back through all those things from being in 2015, to having to talk about testosterone, you know, when that was taboo that was and still it's kind of taboo to going into like changing the brand over to your personal brand to going into COVID. What's the through line there? It's courage. And that's what, you know, like if we could get anything to to people, it's like have the courage to do it. And I think when you step into having that courage, dude, so many people are in fear. They're in fear. Like, well, if I quit my job to what was pursue, so yeah, think? like, what will they think? I'm on, you know, like this trajectory to do really well in this thing, but I hate it. I don't want to do it. Or like you're in a relationship that you don't have the courage to leave, even though you know, that's like eating your soul from the inside out, or maybe it's to lose weight and you, you know, you're, you're a hundred pounds overweight and you're scared to change your life because it's uncomfortable to have the courage to do it. So I think that's one thing, like if anyone can take away from this is like, once you cross that line and have courage, you just open yourself up to all of these other frequencies that you can begin to be on the journey to achieving. So that's one thing, you know, like I respect you so much for and like everything you've taught me is to have that courage. And like you said, it really is just not giving a fuck what other people think and say. And, um, you know, going in the new direction too, what I like about you is like alongside that courage, like one thing that like people that don't know you, they may stand a horror and be like, you know, it sounds kind of like harsh what you say to people, but the people, that have the courage want to hear that. And what we have done, you know, that you've built is like our private community and even people that aren't in the private community, but that follow you and stuff is like, we want it to be more about like building around that because like a lot of people have podcasts and they kind of sit in an ivory tower and it's like, they kind of just talk with the people that they want to talk to. And then they just have these people that follow them. 
Um, but I think what's going to be cool about doing, you know, like the live streams and then our private community and stuff, sometimes to our detriment because it gets overwhelming at point. But then it's also too, like, that helps make us better and then it helps make those people better. So like actually being able to like get intelligence from the audience of like what people really need, you know, because like you can go talk about peptides on like a big mainstream podcast and that sounds cool and people get excited. And guess what? They're still going to have the fear when they order that peptide and it comes in the mail of like injecting it. And, you know, it's like, what good does that do if you can go hype stuff up, but like can't actually help? That just happened so. literally, as you know, an hour ago, I was just on yeah. Billy Carson and Elizabeth Carson's, uh, you know, biohack. Uh, I think it's biohack your best life's podcast and they have a massive audience and it was amazing. And I talked nothing about peptides and Billy's, you know, one of the smartest people on planet earth. And, you know, I blew his mind, you know, talking to him about peptides. So it's like, it's so cool. And obviously Billy and I are close friends. I love Billy. Shout out to Billy. I love Elizabeth too. Monica and I are, and we're all very close personal. We support them and they support us. And it was awesome. But yeah, dude, I mean, like the reality is, is that you have to be literally not in fear. You have to not be scared. You have to literally wake up, as we said earlier today, on our little jacuzzi sessions for our course. You have to literally live your life with purpose. So many people think that they have to live their life with passion. And you said it best. Passion is fleeting. Passion is transient. Just as happiness is transient, joy is a state of being. Purpose is something that you must determine is your life's meaning. I said it earlier, I'll say it again right now. The majority of you guys watching this podcast right now do not have a purpose. Your purpose is not being a good father or a good husband or a good mother or a good grandmother or a good sister or a good boss. Your purpose is what do you do to raise the conscious frequency of the human race in service to without attachment, excuse me, in service without attachment or expectation. What are you doing every day? Hunter and I can tell you guys right now that our purpose is to teach people through our podcast, through our authorship, through our blogs, through our emails, through everything that we do, that it's critically important to raise your frequency. Sure, the biohacking, the peptides, the hormone optimization, all that stuff comes around it because again, a centered and balanced physical avatar will allow you to connect with that spiritual purpose, will allow you to understand the importance of raising your frequency working on your soul, evolving and growing your soul, you know, connecting with your higher self, connecting with the source frequency. You can't do any of that stuff as easily when you're physically misaligned, when you're physically inflamed, obese in a human dumpster fire. So obviously for me in my life, as I figured things out, you know, it started with teaching people how to become more morally optimized. It started with me learning how to master peptides. It started with me learning how to master my physique. But it led to the ultimate purpose, which was teaching people that this was what mattered. Making money, having nice things, having beautiful, you know, girlfriends or wives or, you know, husbands or boyfriends or whatever, all that shit is just material. It's not what matters in the big picture. And again, Hunter, you know, you, you can get the final words, but the big picture, living in this realm of third density as a physically incarnated soul in a human avatar body, which is not even real in and of itself, is to graduate from this level of consciousness. And the only way you're going to graduate from this level of consciousness, which again, theoretically is going to fourth density service to others, is through service to others. You have to learn to polarize, polarize your frequency to be in service. It's as simple as that. If you're not in service, you're not going to graduate. If you're an evildoer, you may graduate to one level higher or even potentially two levels higher as a supreme evildoer. But again, ultimately, it doesn't benefit the many. It doesn't benefit the souls. It doesn't benefit cosmos. It doesn't benefit literally all sentient life force beings because as you know, Hunter, we're all connected. Yeah. We're literally all connected. So what you do to someone else, what you do every day affects everyone else. Again, so if you cannot look in the mirror and understand that you are worthy and that you are worth loving and trusting of yourself, you got more work to do. And again, that's not a judgment. That's not a condemnation. You must work on yourself. You must work on your awareness that you, again, are a living, breathing, conscious frequency connected to the web of universe or the web of light, or literally, again, the whole source frequency itself, the information of everything and no things, as I like to say. And 
not understanding that is just going to make you stay here in this third density cycle and continue to reboot over and over and over again until you learn the lesson. So, hey, maybe as your soul at your level of progression and development, maybe that's what you need. Maybe that's what's required of you right now. And that's cool. But me and Hunter, nah, man, we went out of here. And so again, our purpose is to serve. So again, all I can say is, you know, you get the final word, but thank you all for watching this podcast. Thank you for all for being here. Many of you have been here through the beginning to the end. And again, it's almost 10 years. Thank you for helping make this a top 1% or as you said, a top 0.05% podcast. And again, from my heart to your heart, thank you for just being who you are. Continue to raise your frequency, continue to serve others without attachment or expectation. That's all I got. Yeah. Well, thank you, brother. I love you, man. Love this you. is like, you know, like I said, to get to work on the stuff I do is a dream every day for me. Um, to all the people out there, this doesn't mean obviously we're going away. We're just going to be even that much bigger, faster, stronger, all that good stuff. So um, I think too, we're definitely going to have guests on in the future on yeah, the live stream. Sure. It doesn't mean we go away from talking to guests and stuff, but just in the, in the format, the world's changing and uh, we're adapting and uh, changing in the best way that we see fit. Uh, ultimately, like Jay said, to be in service to you guys. So thank you, bro. And uh, this is just the next big thing coming. Yeah, man. So. so to wrap it up, because I wouldn't be Jay Campbell if I didn't say this. Uh, first off, support Hunter Williams. Go and follow him, his email list. Obviously, if you're supporting me or following me, you're already following him. But for those of you guys that aren't, please make sure you go to his email list and sign up to his stuff. He's got amazing emails and content every day. And obviously there'll be a link into the description. And of course, remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see you very soon. Peace. Peace.